Greetings and welcome to online lecture series of fluid mechanics. Uh, this series is developed uh, based on SPPU syllabus of AC Mechanical 2019 course. Uh, today's lecture, we will focus on basics of fluid mechanics. I'm Dr. P.A. Patil, working as professor and head of mechanical engineering department at Jayavantra Savan College of Engineering, Pune. The contents of today's lecture, so we'll focus on what is fluid first, then what is the concept of continuum, then various application areas of the fluid mechanics. Uh, mechanics, we can say, is the oldest physical science uh, that generally deals with both stationary and moving bodies under the influence of forces. The branch of mechanics that deals with bodies at rest, that is called as statics, while the branch that deals with the bodies in motion is called as dynamics. The subcategory fluid mechanics is defined as the science that deals with the behavior of fluid either at rest, which is known as fluid statics, or in motion, which is known as fluid dynamics, and the interaction of fluids with solids or other fluids at the boundaries. Fluid mechanics itself is also divided into several categories. The study of motion of fluids that are practically incompressible, such as liquid, especially water and gases at low speeds, is usually referred to as a hydrodynamics. A subcategory of hydrodynamics is hydraulics, which deals with the liquid flows in pipes and open channels. Gas dynamic deals with the flow of fluids that undergo significant density changes, such as the flow of gases through nozzles and turbines at a very high speed. Uh, the categories of aerodynamics uh, especially deals with the flow of gases, uh, especially air. Uh, or bodies such as aircraft, rockets, automobiles at high or low speeds. Some other specialization categories uh, such as metrology, oceanography, and hydrology that deals with naturally occurring flows. So in summary, uh, there are two important branches of mechanics that engineering mechanics that you have learned in first year and the fluid mechanics. Fluid mechanics is further classified as hydrodynamics, hydraulics, uh, gas dynamics, and jet propulsion, then aerodynamics, uh, uh, some of the non-conventional uh, subcategories that is metrology, hydrology, and oceanography, uh, which generally deals with naturally occurring flow. Uh, so this is a wide spectrum of fluid mechanics. Uh, it's not only restricted to uh, only a technical field, but also in day-to-day -day life also, we come across various applications of the fluid mechanics. Uh, you will recall from physics that mainly the substance uh, exists. Uh, they are divided into three phases, uh, solids, liquid, and gases at a very high temperatures. It also exists as a plasma. A substance uh, in the liquid or gases phase is generally called as fluid. Uh, intermolecular bonds are stronger in solids and weakest in uh, gases. One reason is that the molecules in solids are closely packed together, whereas in gases, they are separated by relatively large distances and in between the liquid. Uh, so accordingly, uh, uh, stronger the molecular bonding, uh, there is a possibility of uh, more towards the solid or semi-solid, we can say. So molecules are close together. Uh, uh, mainly the distinction between the solid and fluid is made on the basis of substance ability to resist and applied shear or tangential stress that change to uh, that tends to change its shape you can see if we apply the force on the solid uh, the more force is required to change its face uh, while on the other hand of the substance which can deform continuously under the action of shear force is known as fluid uh, so very little force is required to uh, or deform continuously in case of uh, liquid, you can see even with negligible forces, uh, the fluid can deform. Uh, so the substance which can deform continuously under the action of uh, shear force is known as fluid. Another way we can define fluid, that is substance which is capable of flowing. Uh, it has no definite shape. Uh, fluid has no definite shape. It can take the shape of the containing vessel. Uh, so this is about the fluid. 
uh, I've mainly divided it into two categories that is liquid and gases. Uh, liquids for most of the cases are regarded as incompressible. So we cannot press the liquid. Uh, we cannot compress the liquid. That's why it is called as incompressible. On the other hand, the gases are easily compressible under the action of external pressure or force. Hence, they are regarded as a compressible fluid. Uh, it forms a free surface. Uh, uh, generally, if we go any fluid in a container or in bottle, it, it generally uh, forms a free surface which separate it from the surrounding or uh, from other gases. Uh, on the other hand, if we uh, pour the gas in the bottle, it occupies the same uh, entire space and it doesn't form any free surface. Uh, then uh, it uh, liquid has a definite volume, which varies slightly with the temperature and pressures, but uh, there is no definite volume uh, for gases. Uh, it uh, possesses all the, it takes the entire volume of the containing vessel. So you can see even the small quantity of liquid, it only takes that much space. But if we pour the same con uh, gases, it spread, uh, it occupies the entire volume of the vessel. Now, so that is the case. Uh, obviously, the forces of attraction in liquid is between is relatively high, uh, so that it kept the liquid together in a definite volume. On the other hand, the forces of attraction between the molecules is relatively less here. So uh, they spread over the entire container. Uh, so these are some points which differentiate liquid uh, from gases. Uh, especially uh, the scope of this syllabus, uh, that is the study of incompressible fluid or uh, those gases where the compressibility effect is negligible. So the gas dynamic is not a part of this uh, syllabus, only we are dealing with the incompressible flow uh, uh, that may be a uh, air or gas. So gas or air flow uh, is Consider as incompressible if there's no density variation during the course of flow. And liquid, liquid obviously, whatever the temperatures and pressures encountered in practice, uh, for that temperature pressure range, the liquid flow is, most of the cases, is regarded as an incompressible flow. Here we can say the concept of continuum. Uh, uh, generally, each fluid uh, considered in our study is continuously distributed uh, throughout a region of uh, interest or uh, domain. Uh, that is, each fluid is a continuum. Uh, there is a continuity between uh, the part one particle with another particle. A liquid is obviously a continuum, uh, but each gas we consider is also assumed to be continuum. Uh, the molecules are sufficiently close to one another so as to cons constitute a continuum. Uh, so continuum, uh, in that case, we can, uh, uh, that is, uh, we can, uh, keep the field approach. Uh, so whatever the pressures and temperature in that field, we can consider uh, that is the temperature of individual molecule or temperature and pressure of individual molecule as well. Uh, so for that, uh, the continuum model has to be satisfied. So deter to determine if the molecules are sufficiently close, we use mean free path. Uh, the average distance a molecule travels, it collides with the neighboring molecules. So that is called as the mean free path. Uh, the continuum model is applicable as long as the characteristic length of the system, such as its diameter, is much larger than the mean free path of the molecules. So this is generally happen in liquid uh, because the molecules are very close together. So mean free path is comparatively less than its characteristic length. And if this is valid, then the continuum model or that we can go for that field approach. Uh, but at a very high vacuum where uh, there is a very little quantity of fluid, and especially at a high elevations, uh, the mean free path may become large. For example, it is about 0.1 meter for atmosphere air, atmospheric air at an elevation of 100 kilometer. So at 100 kilometer, uh, it's, uh, uh, the density is very less. So molecules are apart, and there uh, the characteristic length uh, is much smaller than uh, that of the mean free path. Uh, so in such circum circumstances, the rarefied gas flow theory is applicable. And uh, that impact of individual molecules should be considered here rather than the entire field approach. So, so that particular science is called as a particle approach. So Lagrangian approach is generally used for that particular circumstances. 
but in our study uh, we will consider that the continuum model is valid because we are dealing with liquid especially for incompressible flow and even if we consider a uh, uh, gas still we consider this particular flow path uh, that that uh, we ensure or that is uh, uh, that will be ensured that the molecules are close together and uh, the characteristic length is uh, much larger than the mean free path so the continuum model is valid in incompressible flow or generally the flow takes place at the ground level so at the space or at the high, very high vacuum conditions so this approach is not applicable so whatever the theory we will study, which is not applicable for uh, the space technology as well as the vacuum technology. Uh, the various application areas, uh, so fluid mechanics is one of the fundamental branches of engineering. Uh, so uh, it has a wide uh, range of applications. Uh, so uh, it is used in everyday activities and in the design of modern engineering systems as well from vacuum cleaner to supersonic aircraft. Therefore, it is important to develop a good understanding of the basic principles of the fluid mechanics. Uh, so to begin with, fluid mechanics plays a vital role in the human body as well. A heart is considered as a pumping blood to all parts of the human body through the arteries and veins. And uh, lungs are the sites of airflow in alternating directions. Uh, needless to say, all uh, artificial hearts, breathing machines, and dialysis systems are designed using fluid dynamic principles. Uh, an ordinary house is, uh, in some respect, in its exhibition hall, filled with the application of fluid mechanics. <laughs> for example, the piping systems for cold water, natural gas, sewages uh, for individual houses, and the entire city are designed primarily on the basis of the fluid mechanics. Uh, the same is also true for the piping and ducting work of heating and refrigeration systems. Uh, a refrigerator involves tubes through which the refrigerant flows, a compressor that pressurizes the refrigerant, and the two heat exchangers where the refrigerant absorbs and rejects heats. Uh, so all this part where the fluid mechanics knowledge is required. Fluid mechanics plays a major role in the design of all these components. Uh, even the operation of ordinary uh, faucets uh, are like uh, uh, the kitchen outlets or the bathroom uh, fittings. So where uh, the working of this uh, ordinary equipment that is again based on the fluid mechanics principle. Uh, so we see the glimpses of these applications. So first automobile, if you take, um, uh, so this is the application where the hydraulic jack is used. Uh, so the design of this hydraulic jack is again based on the principle of fluid mechanics like Pascal's law. Uh, so this is application of brake. Uh, most of the automobile, the braking system is either pneumatic or hydraulics. So in order to design this braking system, the knowledge of fluid mechanics is required. Mixing of uh, you know, that is fuel and air uh, that takes place in the combustion chamber. Again, the distribution of this air fuel ratio is again based on the uh, fluid mechanics principle. So in order to reduce the drag force or air resistance in automobile, especially high speed uh, automobiles, uh, it is necessary to study the aerodynamic study, uh, aerodynamics of the car. So there we require a knowledge of fluid mechanics. Lubricating in the engine, uh, it again works on uh, the principle of fluid mechanics, especially the viscosity plays an important role here. Uh, same is uh, here, the lubrication is taking place on the cycle chain. Uh, so every, everywhere, wherever there is a fluid, uh, as a working fluid in a automobile, uh, it needs knowledge of fluid mechanics. Secondly, piping system. Uh, this is a piping system in any uh, uh, refrigeration and conditioning plant uh, where uh, the refrigerant moves to various components, uh, like from cooling tower to heat exchangers, from compressors, evaporators. So everywhere the fluid is moving. So in order to calculate the pressure drop calculations, as well as the heat exchange, heat transfer calculations, the knowledge of fluid mechanics is required. Uh, construction of, uh, that is, this is a penstock of uh, hydro, uh, hydroelectric power station. So design of penstock, uh, optimum design of penstock is again, depends on how much uh, uh, the, uh, the energy is transmitted, the percentage of energy transmitted that again, depends on the knowledge of fluid mechanics. Uh, the pumping system in uh, the city, the everywhere, uh, the uh, uh, even in urban sector, the uh, the 
pumping system distributed over the entire city that again depends on the what are the pipings the pressure drop calculation design of pumping again based on the fluid mechanics uh, the smart irrigation systems uh, nowadays they are invented so uh, based on the fluid mechanics principle we can uh, effectively use the water sources so there also the knowledge of fluid mechanics is required so these are the piping systems used in various sectors we can say where the wherever there is a uh, piping system so the the hydraulics comes in the picture and in order to calculate the pumping power the pressure drop calculations so for that the knowledge of fluid mechanics is required power plants uh, the construction of dam we can say in uh, uh, hydroelectric power plant there we require uh, the knowledge of fluid mechanics especially static principles are used extraction of energy from the wind design of wind blades that is entirely based on the fluid dynamic principles uh, then the flow of fluid uh, in the any uh, thermal power plant or nuclear power plant where the different fluids are used for cooling purpose as well as working fluids so their characteristics and their uh, performances are calculated based on the fluid mechanics principle uh, in thermal power plant or nuclear power plant especially the design of uh, the natural cooling tower which is called as uh, uh, which has a shape of um, hyperbola uh, there uh, the knowledge of fluid mechanics is required to how the flow is possible uh, other the extraction of hydraulic uh, energy from the uh, dam uh, how to extract the maximum energy again based on the hydraulic principles or the uh, principle of fluid mechanics medical sector especially pacemaker or artificial hearts manufacturing even in covid situation what distance to be maintained uh, to um, avoid uh, the infection or to avoid uh, we can say uh, the transmission of covid dc is uh, so that distance is calculated again based on the fluid mechanics principle and then the working of and design of ventilators then dialysis systems uh, the quantity of transmission of oxygen or carbon dioxide to arteries and veins uh, they are especially uh, estimated based on the fluid mechanics principles the working of blood pressure uh, and the blood pressure instrument instrument that is sigma manometer and uh, dialysis instrument so all these instruments are working on the principle of fluid mechanics so even in medical sector the fluid mechanics plays a very important role on so home appliances we can say the vacuum cleaner the refrigerator inside the uh, refrigerator chambers uh, so the distribution of air so the cold section and freezer sections as well as the vegetable sections to uh, maintain the humidity of in the veg vegetable section uh, the fluid mechanics principles uh, is important then the flow of refrigerant through various pipings of the refrigerator that again depends on the fluid mechanics principle uh then uh, the washing machine flow of uh, especially consider the rotational flow uh, where uh, in order to design a washing machine uh, so this uh, fluid mechanics principles are uh, useful then the distribution of air uh, inside the air conditioner room uh, how the whether that the distribution of air is uniform or non uniform uh, and how the velocity is distributed there we require a knowledge of kinematics especially so there also the fluid mechanics knowledge is required cooling system maybe it is electronic cooling or normal uh, heat exchangers uh, there uh, it requires a knowledge because heat exchangers where the uh, fluid attacks heat from one source and is delivered that heat to the atmosphere uh, so there uh, the fluid mechanics principle especially along with the heat transfer that is convection part uh, so convection is indispensable uh, Uh, with the fluid mechanics uh, so it is essential part for convection that knowledge of fluid mechanics is uh, required so there uh, uh, the fluid mechanics principles are very useful flow machines uh, and uh, uh, especially turbo machines we can say the hydraulic pumps hydraulic turbines like francis turbine then axial turbine axial uh, or compressors we can say all axial flow machines where uh, in order to calculate the Uh, extraction of power power required flow analysis everywhere the fluid mechanics knowledge is required so flow or submerged object here uh, the old ships we can say that mainly the navigation of these ships uh, mainly based on the fluid mechanic principles so without any uh, external sources only based on the navigation 
uh, the, uh, these ships were working early days. Uh, uh, then uh, the stability of the ship, especially in high tide condition. Uh, so in order to determine the stability, the fluid mechanics, that is buoyancy principle is required. So there also this knowledge is required, uh, especially tall buildings, uh, multi-story buildings. Um, uh, there the flow analysis is taking place uh, to maintain the stability of such buildings in the, uh, especially in the windy climate, it should, uh, the building should be sustained. So because of this wind force, it should not collide. Uh, that's why uh, this uh, flow analysis is taking place earlier in the design phase itself. Uh, air, uh, aircraft uh, for lift and drag forces uh, or the fluid mechanics that is especially the gas dynamic part is there so it is important so flow or submerged objects uh, so where uh, the flow is taking that uh, that flow is also regarded as external flow so this external theory is used then various uh, flow measuring devices uh, design of flow measuring devices working of these flow measuring devices as well as uh, design and working of pressure measuring devices they are based on the fluid mechanics principle, especially the Bernoulli's equation is used here uh, to design these instruments. Even uh, some miscellaneous example that is tornado, uh, that effect of tornado, how much uh, torque it generates and because of this generation of torque, how much damage it occurs. So all these calculations uh, can be made with the for fluid mechanics principle that you can see the spinning, spinning of ball is also based on the fluid mechanics principle that is a Bernoulli's theorem. Uh, weather conditions forecasting uh, depends on that metrology uh, category uh, through the uh, fluid, it's one of the fluid mechanics. Uh, uh, the tactics of swimming, uh, that is uh, generally the swimming, uh, the swimmers learn uh, based on the fluid mechanics principle, the trainers generally teach them uh, the fluid mechanics principle that how to minimize your uh, drag forces, how to uh, minimize your forces required so that you can achieve the distance with, uh, a slow, uh, with less time. So there also uh, the fluid mechanics principle works. Uh, and then other condition that is high tide and low tide conditions, uh, these working again based on the fluid mechanics principle. You can see the uh, this is low tide, this is high tide conditions. How, it occurs that again, this is naturally occurring flow. So it again, based on the fluid, uh, fluid mechanics principle. So you can see uh, the fluid mechanics has a wide spectrum. It's not, maybe not related with a particular branch, but uh, every engineer must understand uh, the fluid mechanics. Uh, so that's why my ap uh, appeal to everyone, don't take this subject as exam point of view, because this subject has uh, a lot much to carry uh, forward. Uh, so a lot much takeaways from this particular subject. So uh, thorough understanding uh, in this particular subject will definitely help you in future, especially for higher studies or developing your thought process. Uh, so that's why uh, uh, this is a overall diversity of this particular subject. Uh, so at the end of this particular topic, uh, you should be able to elaborate a definition of fluid mechanics. So we can say the different classes of the fluid mechanics as well. Uh, then explain what is fluid we have studied that what is fluid what are the categories of fluid fluid how we can differentiate liquid from the gases so this categories is there then explain what is continuum continuum theory is oh, very much essential for field approach unless and until the continuum model is valid we cannot uh, uh, apply that field approach field approach means we can measure the temperature and pressure or any other quantity parameters at the one particular point, not at uh, uh, one particular fluid particle. So we can assume that if continuum model is not valid, uh, then uh, generally uh, for that field approach is uh, not applicable. We have to uh, rely on particle approach where the individual behavior we have to monitor. So generally the space that technology is used, but uh, in our this, uh, this course, uh, uh, we consider that continuum model is valid and all the principles and all the equations, what we study, these equations are applicable only when if the continuum model is valid. So that is a more important concept. Then the difference between liquid and gases we have seen, and uh, we have seen the various application areas of the fluid mechanics, and uh, you will come to know uh, through these applications, so how the fluid mechanics uh, is important for every engineer. 
uh, understanding uh, maybe uh, you are a mechanical engineer civil engineer chemical engineer computer engineer electronics engineer so everywhere the fluid mechanic principle is required so wherever there is a fluid and almost uh, air is av available everywhere and the effect of air is experiences by everyone so even in day to day application also uh, to understand uh, uh, the behavior of any physical phenomena fluid mechanics knowledge is essential so uh, this is uh, what this topic is all about uh, uh, thank you very much for your patient care thank you